Hi and welcome back to MRTV. Welcome to another Meganex Superlight 8K video. In this video, I'm going to show you the software of the Meganex Superlight 8K, and I'm going to walk you through everything that you can do here, just so that you have an idea of how that would look like. And yeah, let's directly get into this. So this is how it looks, and well, you can download it from the website once you've made. The purchase and yeah it is pretty straightforward here on the top right you can choose the language English and Japanese probably you're going to choose English like me and that's good hopefully there's going to be more language in the future but even if Eng English is not your native language like mine like also not mine <laughs> then I'm still sure that you can um, yeah find your way through this because also there's this video and it is straightforward. Okay, let's start. So here on the left, we have a few things that we can choose. Mega Next device update help. And let's go through the Mega Next part here. And we have some choices that we can do. Let's start with device info. And here device info, it simply shows the state of the headset. So this green check mark, it shows us, yes, the device is on, everything is okay. And it's started. Good. Then here is a, a reboot button. You click it and then the device, the device, <laughs> the device will shut down and reboot again. So that's good if you want it. And also there's a, a power off button. If you want to completely shut it down, you can do so too. And also there's actually a physical button on the bottom of the headset. You can also click that if you absolutely want to shut it down. So very straightforward. Then next one's very interesting. It's the IPD setting. So it shows us the current IPD, the interpupillary, interpupillary distance. And yeah, it's set to 65 millimeters now. Actually, my IPD is 64 millimeters. But the, yeah, the lenses are so good. They have such a big sweet spot. And you also find if you put it like, like a, a bit higher or a bit lower. So you can do that. So if you click on the on the minus or plus, it's going to change. And actually moving, the lens is going to move. Yeah, that is really cool. So there's a motor inside and it's simply going to move. And once you, you have set your IPD, you can click on save current IPD. When you click it, it's going to ask you for your name. And well, I've already saved it here, Sebastian, right? And that's so cool. It's going to store your IPD. So if you're using the headset with more than one person, like for example, if your partner also likes VR, then the name of your partner would be here as well. So for me, it would be Sebastian and then Eliza. And then if my wife would be using it, she would click on Eliza and automatically her IPD would be set for her. So very, very cool. Very nice to use this with more than one person. Or also, Probably if you're going to use this at work, right? Because now we finally have the resolution where you can work with this. And I'm going to show you this in another video that I'm going to show you soon. So you can easily, yeah, share this headset with your colleagues and nobody has to set their IPD more than once. So nice. Okay, let's keep on looking what else we have. Audio setting. Why are there audio settings when there's no audio? Well, there is a microphone. And you can set the gain here. And that's good. I didn't do that in my first videos. Yeah, I simply gave you the content as soon as possible. But now I've set it to 39. It was on 50 before. So now the mic should sound better. And it shouldn't be so hot. Also, in my last video, I had a strong lisp. It was kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, I, lo I loved a lot when I watched that video. And the reason was the noise reduction was on strong. And it would compress the audio in a way that gave me that lisp. So now I've set it to weak, and I hope that I don't have this lisp anymore. But there shouldn't be a lisp anyways, right? So I told the company, and they told me, yes, they are aware of it, and they're going to give us a fix that will completely eliminate the lisp, hopefully. Lisp. Hopefully that sounds like okay and not funny. Then we have a beam forming. You can choose wide or narrow. Yeah, so. You have this choice for this microphone here. Good, good. 
All right, next we have image setting. Of course, very important. Let me go up. So first of all, brightness. When the device comes to you, it's going to be set to 50. And yeah, for my, for my feeling, that's too dim. So I set it to, to 70 to 97. And yeah, now th this is a very nice brightness. It is somewhere between Pico 4 and Quest 3, I would say, in terms of brightness, but it has way better contrast. So I prefer this over both um, yeah, optical stacks of the other headsets that I just mentioned. It's, it's great. And it better be for 2,000 euros, right? So yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. So why didn't I put it to 100%? Right now, I, there's still some bug in this. When I set it to 100%, like one of the displays will be darker than the other. So for 97%, I don't have this problem. Yeah, probably a little bug that the team still has to fix. So interestingly, we can you can also adjust left, right individually if you want. Yeah, so if, for example, for some reason, one display is brighter than the other. It, it can happen with displays, right? Then you have the chance to, uh, yeah, to, to adjust the, the brightness of one and make it dimmer, for example, or the other brighter so that you have the same brightness on both displays. Very cool setting. And actually, this can truly happen with displays. Yeah, so um, it's good that they have this. Very well done. So then you can also change the contrast. And that is actually cool. It was on 50 before. I put it to 54. I wanted a bit more of that OLED feeling, that high contrast, because I felt at 50, it was, yeah, it was okay, but it was not this, wow, this super nice contrast. And you have these great contrasts with OLED. Why not make use of it, right? And uh, actually, I, th I should make another through the lens video because I did not, I had not set up <laughs> that before I was doing my through the lens video. I was too excited about this through, through the lens video. I wanted to make it fast, but you know what? I should do another one with my new colors here that I set up. So then black levels, also for that, it was on 50 before, but I went down a bit to have even darker blacks. You can make them super black. Obviously it's OLED and yeah, so you can still set this. And then also chroma. If you want your colors to, yeah, to have this deep saturation, you know, if you want it to look like super OLED-y, like the PSVR 2 or the Samsung Galaxy displays from their phones, you can do that with Chroma. So it was on 50 before, which was okay, right? But if you want this, ah, this OLED feeling, yeah, and I want it, then you can set the Chroma a bit up. And that's what I did here. And now, yeah, it looks, ah, it looks so OLED. -y. You know, I love OLED. And this is an OLED headset. Why not make full use of it? Okay, you can set the color temperature if you want. And also here, you can set the dyna dyna dynamic range, SDR or HDR. If you have some HDR content, you must change it here, and then it can be shown. And what's nice about this? This is really, really also for professional users, for designers who need to have the color ac accuracy and stuff, right? Or if you want another color mapping, you can change it here to Adobe, right? Or if you want, if you need gamma correction, you get it here. Or if you need a certain um, color calibration here, you have that. So it's a very professional device. And also you can set the individual colors here, RGB. And um, if, for example, oh, this looks too brownish or... Oh, this looks too bluish. Okay, you can set it up. And I appreciate that you can do that here. Alrighty. So now what, what's next? <laughs> Let's have a look. Movie setting. Okay, so you can also set the resolution of this. You can choose between the original 4K. But if you want to run this at 2.6K, you could. Very nice. Bit depth, yes, you can also change it from 10 bits to 8 bits. So I'm going to keep it at 4K and 10 bits. Yes. So what's next? That's it for the Mega Next part here, that, that tab. Then device update. So you have the, the update mode online. So in online mode, this is simply going to check on the Mega Next server. 
if there is anything new for you. But here you can see, no, I'm all on the latest versions. That's good. And if there was something new, some new firmware for anything, I would simply update it and it would update the software. Nice. What I appreciate, <laughs> and I think you as well, this headset does not force you to be online to do updates. Yeah, for example, I don't know. Probably, um, yeah. Do you you got the update the update software on a disk? Yeah, for some reasons. You can also update this by unchecking online and simply selecting your firmware. I don't know. Probably. The company wants to give you some sort of special firmware. They just send it to you and then you choose it and you update it with the offline um, files, which I personally really appreciate. Good. And by the way, also there is yeah, no um, account that you have to make. You don't have to make a Meganex account. You can use this completely anonymously. Yes. I like that, and that is the right thing to do, in my personal opinion. <laughs> you know what I'm referring to here. <laughs> okay, so that's good. Total offline mode. Okay, so um, then help. We have we have self diagnosis. So if something's wrong, you can start the diagnosis and. That's good. Didn't have to do that yet. That's the self-diagnosis, the setup guide. When I first, um, when I first um, connected the headset for the first time, it walked me through what I had to do. Like, okay, install VR, uh, install Steam VR, blah blah blah. How to set up the connection to the headset. So very nice for people who simply don't know. How to set up a PC VR headset? Like, okay, that you need Steam VR and, and such. For us, for the viewers of this, most probably we know that already. But there are people who, for the first time, want to use um, PC VR, and it's great that they are like um, taught step by step how that works. So very well done here. Shift all. And then the manual, it's there. Here it is, the Manganex Superlight 8K official manual in English. And yeah, it's very nice. It's It just feels like a typical Japanese company's manual. Just like whenever I get, like, for example, a Sony product, I love it because the manual is just so nicely done in most of the cases. Yeah, it, it simply gives you that kind of Japanese high-tech product feeling, and it is. And I really appreciate that. <laughs> yep, so that's that. Um, troubleshooting. It also just opens the manual. Okay, that's probably wrong. It should be something else probably. Inquire, inquiry. If you have any problems with the device, you can go to the Shift All website. Yeah, and then connect with them. Okay, that's very straightforward too. Okay, lock collection. Okay, that's cool. So, again, if you have any problems with the software, if, if, if I don't know, if it shuts down or there's something wrong, this software is logging everything. Yeah, so if you have any problems, you can collect the lock and you can send it to the team and then they can analyze it and make the next version better. So, super, super nice professional to do it this way. And yeah, that's it. App settings. Language. Yes, you can change the language here. You can choose a dark mode and a bright mode. And by the way, this is bright now. I, I don't want it. It's too bright for me. So that's a great thing. This is not dim. This is like a good brightness. And yeah, I prefer dark mode here. App version is now 1.2.00. Probably when you are getting your Mega Next, then it's going to be higher already because there's still some bugs that they're going to fix, right? So next versions are coming up. Yeah, and that's it. Super straightforward. I really hope that now you have a better idea of 
what you have to expect with the software. You can download it from the website. And um, yeah, it works well. It's the stuff that needs to be done. It gets those things done. Very straightforward. No, um, not forcing you to make some account. Everything just how I love it. Yeah, and that's it for this video. <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed it. If yes, give it a thumbs up. And of course, if you have not yet subscribed to MRTV, absolutely do that now. And yeah, why don't you join? the MRTV community, the MRTV Discord server. I'm there every day. I live there, really, I live there. And I'm answering people. Um, it's a great community, great discussions. And if you want to really like um, dive deeply into those topics, Mega Next and Super and all the stuff, this is really a great Discord server. And yeah. So what else to say? Of course, if you want to support my work, if you want to support this channel, you can do so. And the best way to do so, if you if your purchase decision for this headset or another headset is based on my videos, on me going to Tokyo or to CES to find those things for you, then, of course, I would appreciate it if you buy the headsets through the MRTV affiliate links. They're always in the description of the videos of these headsets and it doesn't cost you anything, but you're supporting my work and that also in the future I can find those headsets for you and give you XR reviews that you can trust. Yes, but that's everything now. Um, do let me know in the comment section what other things do you want to know about the Mega Next. I have it now, and I'm just here to answer all your questions and to uh, give you the best content possible. But now that's it. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one. Give it a thumbs up. Until then, bye-bye.